It's always like your birthday with a package from China, so let's go! Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, it's awesome that you're tuning in, because in this video we are going to take a close look at the new product from Pow Kitty. it's the X45. One of my subscribers here in the Wicked family said like, hey there is a new model out there and I completely missed it. So I just wanted to see what are we going to get with this device, is this thing any, yeah, like, is it even worth picking up, due of the price point of these things. What I don't like about it already, like this thing comes with an analog stick at the left top, I'm more like a D-pad player so that's going to be an issue, the D-pad feels Quite okay, but let's talk about it later. Inside the box, we're going to get ourselves the toilet paper manual, the deluxe edition. It even comes in English, so that is great. Lots of basic like explanation how everything works, not a lot of information about the software itself. Then we're going to get ourselves a Type C cable, and that's it. Or, yeah, there's nothing else. Yeah, there's nothing that works anymore. So, yeah. Let's get rid of it, and let's take a close look at the handheld itself. <laughs> So when it comes to Pow Kitty, I must say like, I was having like mixed feelings with this, because Pow Kitty, I would say like they allow, do have like this mix when it comes to quality systems. Uh, what do I mean with quality systems? Sometimes Pow Kitty have these amazing handhelds and sometimes it feels like a rebranded uh, like piece of shit that they like sell from like their name, but you're just going to get yourself like a different quality and overall. So at the left side we're gonna get ourselves the analog stick, similar to the Nintendo Switch, only without the freaking click. Then we do have like the D-pad, and I must say like it's a very short travel D-pad, I personally really like it. And also we need to test it out with some games now, because oh man, is this thing even worth it when it comes to the D-pad. At the right side we're gonna get ourselves three clickies buttons, that's basically like the menu, select and the start. And then we have like the ABXY button, but these are like... Mm, they're kind of tiny and they're like quite long travel, a little bit of the wiggly buttons, not a big fan of them. And when you're holding them, they don't play very bad, but still in like the same style with the Nintendo Switch, I don't like these tiny buttons. Alright, so for the shoulder buttons, we're going to get four of them over here. So when you're holding them, or you need to hold the system like that, of course, you can reach them fairly easy. System ready, powered on, whoops. So then we have like the volume control, the headphone jack out, something you don't have with every single handheld nowadays. We have like an HDMI port that I wanted to try because HDMI port is pretty damn cool. And then we have like the in for the type C. Nevertheless, it's for charging because at the bottom, there we go to get ourselves the SD card over here. And we have like two USB ports because basically what you can do is like connect your, this thing to your like television and have like a plug and play gauge system. I think it's pretty damn cool. Over here, we're only going to get one speaker, a little bit of bummer, because I really love it when I have like two speakers. But this thing sounds pretty damn good. So let's go all full wicked nerdy mode. And the specifications, a 4.5 inch IPS display with a resolution of 854 by 480. CPU is an ATM 7051, like, you know, like all kinds of very low specs. And that is a little bit of a bummer because I would not expect a lot from it. Nevertheless, we do have like places one support, but let's get into the gameplay, by the way. But when it comes to the display itself, I must say that I am not the biggest fan of it. Besides that, it has like this very glossy, like say, front glass. I must say that it is not, like say, the greatest. Like it doesn't... But don't get me wrong, it's not like with the cheap to the cheap tube handhelds, but I have seen so many more beautiful displays. This thing is not the best. And man, this bloody thing is reflective. Ugh. So when powering on, what you're going to get is more like this plug and play device. And I mean when you don't need to do any tinkering with the software, and I mean especially when it comes to the back end. So here we have like the support for Famicom, Game Advance, Arcade, Super Famicom, all the way up to PlayStation 1. It's not like something very special because we do have like so many handhelds to play all of these systems. Here are like favorite list and history, you have search option and have like the file. And basically what you can do over here is like go into music, listen to some test music if you want to, or if you want to boot up a video or basically an MP4 file. So it is like a multifunctional device. That is there's something like a positive side about it. But beside that, there is nothing much you can change out. So we do get like this horrible list itself. We have like the type. So when you choose and type, let's say like we want to have Mega Drive, you click on it and you're going to get all yourself like Mega Drive games that you have added to the system. So it's like super like basic if you ask me. As you're going to boot up a game, you're pressing the menu button. So what you're going to get over here, we do have like the quick load, quick save progress. Then we have like the settings and with the settings, we have like stuff that we can change out. Like the key tune can be changed out. 
keyboard mapping, they love to call it like keyboard mapping, you know, like controller mapping. Screen size, what I do like about it, let's put it on scale. Basically, when you can put it in scale, you have like the normal SPS ratio or something like it. Joystick mode, they can change out over here and we can also reset the settings. So that's basically, in my opinion, the only thing that you can change out. So it's very limited. And that's what I mean with plug and play. It's like what you see is what you're going to get. Okay, so the first thing that I want to try is some Batman on the NES. Oh, there we go. So what we can use, we can use the analog stick or the D-pad. So it's more like what kind of configuration or controls you want to use with this. Both work just fine. Just punch them all in the dick. Because of it, man. Yeah, come on, boy. Crap. Ow. But when it comes to emulation of the MNES, it's just fine. So let's continue and let's exit out. All right, so next up, I want to try some GBA. And so far, I can see, but also here, everything seems to be working just fine. With the SPS ratio, we do have like some sidebars over here. So I think it's a pretty damn cool option. If you don't like the stretch widescreen, you can just play it like this. Let's go back to the D-pad itself. Even if it's not like my favorite position, it does play okay. Alright, the next up I wanted to try out is some art of finding on Neo Geo, just to see how this runs. With some of these cheaper handhelds, we do have like issues. Somehow, they just messed it up with emulator, but so far I can see like everything sounds like it should be. So I just want to do my move, like the D-pad, absolutely horrible. I'm glad the edit and good analog stick. Oh, just missed him. But so far I can see it works pretty damn good. For the next test I want to try some Super NES and I already hear some problems with the audio in general. Some crackling noise, it's not a big of a deal, but I just wanted to see how in overall the performance is. Would that be the first time they mess something up like this? So far so good, in the beginning it did have like some problems. You can just hear it now too. And here you can hear it, like it's absolutely like horrible. But beside that, like the minor flaws, the game seems to be working fine. Most of the time what you're going to get with these devices is that if you mess it up, yeah, you don't have any, let's say, option to like improve it. There's no way of switching out the emulator. So when it's basically like has issues, you're stuck. With your okay, so let's take a close look at some gameplay of Mega Drive or Genesis. But audio sounds great. no idea how to switch between characters but the weird thing is like not only I'm having problem with this game and the other game I've tried I didn't have any controls whatsoever so I don't know what's going on exactly with Mega Drive but eh, not great all right so let's take a close look at some PlayStation gaming I already noticed some weird glitching going on so let's see if everything works okay so we don't have any function on the analog stick we do have like on the d-pad so next thing we need to do is going to the setting Let's take a close look at, I think it was the joystick mode. Let's put it on digital. Let's see if we can fix that too. Let's return. And there we go. Yeah, I changed it between emulators because I had some issues with the Mega Drive. But I cannot really show the FPS, but I can tell you that it seems to be that having, besides having some minor glitches, PlayStation seems to be running just fine. So that is absolutely great. There's no background music, so the file that's on here is not correctly put on here. That's a major problem you're seeing a lot with these PlayStation games. That they're putting on the game itself, but they mess it up with the audio files. But opening up, it's going to be not like a big of a challenge. So what you're going to need is basically like a screwdriver and then we have like a pry tool because these things are basically like screwed together with four screws and then basically having like every the rest of the part of the plastic is clicked together. So here we do it again, we get ourselves like the 3000 mAh battery. Kind of funny because it's most of the weight of the device if you ask me. 
but this is basically what you're going to get one big PCB in the inside so they did solder the speaker on here so if you need to replace it you need to do some soldering the same goes with the battery and yeah that's it like the ribbon cables over here from the for the display so if you're going to remove all the other parts you're going to basically lift out the full let's say PCB where underneath you will find basically the display itself so there's nothing really fancy to find in the inside but I just want to give you a quick peek but when connecting it with the television, what you're going to get is just a plug and play situation. It basically like gives it a dual screen option. We still can use the screen of the device itself, but it also shows it on the handheld itself. All right, so next up, let's see what we're going to get with the gameplay. Do have an audio delay when it comes to MAME to begin with. Just wanted to do a dual test. So the overall emulation is not great of MAME, but also so when it comes to playing on the television, that works pretty damn good. Okay, I'm curious what happens if we go into the menu, we're going to set it back to screen size. It's kind of weird that it was set on skill, but it seems to be that this doesn't really affect the MAME emulator. So it's kind of bummer. So let's put it back on skill, let's see what happens. Yeah, so that's kind of weird. So the scaling option doesn't work perfectly when it comes to this. The next thing I wanted to try out is just to see if you can plug in the controller and how that it actually works out. Okay, we get yep. Wow, that's quite difficult. So when getting my Xbox 360 controller, it seems to be blinking, but it doesn't do anything. And the reason I'm always trying this Xbox 360 because it's a very common controller that works most of the time, but somehow with this device, it's not a good idea. So somehow, like, I'm not a big fan of this in general. Like, if this doesn't work, in my opinion, it's going to be a nightmare finding a controller actually that works. So when it comes to the controllers, it's absolutely thumbs up. The Pau KD X45. I have reviewed all kinds of Pau KD devices, and this is more like their casual product. I mean, like, the software, it's very limited. Like, the screen is not the best thing. I really hate that reflective screen is at the front of it. But beside that, the D-pad, yeah, for just casual games is okay, but for fighting games, absolutely horrible. And looks thick. I personally really love that they put them in the left top corner, simply because it's a way better option. Beside that, like it's an overall okay performance thing. But when it comes to these handhelds, there are so many of these things out there that are basically for the same money and way better choice. Well, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit the little bell, and it will be great to see you in the next video.